Welcome back to another episode of After Hours. I am your host, Dave Palumbo, and we are joined by the uh, regular WAC Packers plus one, and that plus one is uh, Richard Rodriguez, who was released from prison this past Tuesday. Uh, congratulations on uh, coming home and uh, being a free man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> now, excited. Now, thank you, John thank Bravo, you. for bringing uh, Richard on, of course. And uh, I watched, no if you want to see a little interview that uh, John did with him yesterday, it's up on John Bravo's, uh, Bravo, what is it, Bravo Television? What's the name of your channel? Uh, just John Bravo Films. Okay, John Bravo Films, right. Yeah. Shit, I didn't see that. Before. I watched it. I watched it yesterday. So I, I got, that was my pre-interview with, with, with Richard. Now, Richard, uh, let's take a step back. Yeah, what no. is it, six years now? When, when did you first get arrested? Uh, February 2017. Okay. I can't believe time flies so fast. Well, maybe not for you. It didn't, unfortunately. <laughs> for me, for me, it flew very fast. I had three kids in that, in that, during that time period. Tell us what happened. Tell us what you did, what, how you got caught. And then, then we'll put our two cents in. So from my perspective. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I ended up, um, deciding uh when, when i moved to uh miami i was like hey you know what i'm accustomed to making a certain amount of money on a uh, on a um living uh, being a former new york resident however right. i was interviewing with a lot of top uh corporate companies you name it oracle burger king none of them was offering me remotely close to what i was what were you to doing what percent. were you doing prior what was your job I was a management consulting. Uh, I was a management consulting director for McKenzie, a publicly traded company, but specifically in the pharmaceutical space. I used to do a lot of like competitive benchmarking, marketing analysis, anything in the marketing arena. Um, I was pretty much like the go-to person setting up the marketing infrastructures gotcha. for drugs right, right when they were going to be in the process of being um, okay to to be promoted. Too, too, too smart for your own good right off the bat, right? I got it. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Intelligence um, so, is a terrible curse sometimes, yeah. Very, very bad curse. Um, you should so have been I a dumb drug dealer like us. <laughs> then no, he would have done six months, a, Greg. Yeah. You should have been a dumb drug dealer like us. I was taking drugs and throwing them on the fucking front <laughs> counter on my desk and shit like that in a gym. In a fucking you, know what's, you know what's funny? Did you say that, Greg? Because I've always used to say to my friends, I was like, hey, I didn't learn how to be a fucking criminal until I came to prison. <laughs> because, you have all, <laughs> because you have all these phenomenal drug cartels and everybody heard, like you know, everybody like knew about me. Specifically, when I went into, the, I got into the Miami camp, they were like, "Man, we know you, man. We heard about WFN, Iron Addicts. Come on over, man." It's like, let's hang out. And they educated me about <laughs> stashing shit on, you know, <laughs> on the ground and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, "Fuck! If I would have known this shit, right? You know? Yeah, you're not gonna do <laughs> it again. But it's nice to know that you what you should have done. Now you, but Richard, you owe- I was a Momo. I was taking fucking like bricks of fucking testosterone, throwing them on the front counter of a powerhouse gym that I own. And you know why? Because I thought, well, oh, dude, I got cops that fucking buying this shit. I had state troopers coming in my gym, going in the back room, getting a shot, leave. You know what I mean? So I figured, oh, the, the difference, fuck, Greg, was there was no internet. There was no paper trail. That, that was the difference. Right. Yeah. Back Richard. then. Now, back then, Rich, yeah. Richard, funny thing. I just want to let people know what you you owned Iron Addicts Gym in Miami, which is very well known, and we'll go into that in a second. And then you also owned the, what was it called, Living Well? Uh, no, no, never, never, never. Oh, owned that's a different well. one. What was the one you owned? Uh, no, was, Living well, well was the piece of shit. You don't want yeah, to mention. No, I know. That. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, it was WFN, which is Wellness Fitness. Oh, well, right, right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, what happened to Iron Addicts when you went into the um into the into jail? Who took over that? Um, no one actually took over. It, it got shut down. Oh, it and, just was uh, closed. Okay. Terrible. Yeah, that was a great gym. Really, um, you know, and, and, and to be frank, even when I got out, um, it just, it was just so resource intensive and capital intensive, intensive to even, uh, remotely fathom and, and trying to reestablish it and opening it because I, you know, initially I invested over $2 million just to get that place open. Were you just like kind of funneling the, the drug money into that gym to keep it open? Um, yes and no. Uh, like you, like you said in the beginning, uh, sometimes you're too smart for your own kind, you know? <laughs> so 
my my objective was to uh, eventually have enough Iron Addicts um, franchises across the states right. to um, ha- my succession plan basically was to have about four or five of them net me about forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month, and then just hand over WFN to somebody. But unfortunately, they didn't go to court. The gym the was making that much money per month. That mu- that gym, believe it or not, after all the investments, over three thousand people in attendance, it was netting me by about month six about twenty five thousand dollars a month so you didn't even wow. need to sell you didn't even need to sell drugs after with that gym pretty much pretty much and and believe it or not after when you know when it's about around month six which was january a month before i got popped right <laughs> <laughs> i was already accelerating my exit strategy um however um i didn't do it too fast long late plans of mice and men off go astray now all right so talk about before the gym there was there was the the uh the the, the rejuvenation clinic, whatever you want to call it. What did you, how did you set this thing up? What was your mindset going into this thing? Well, my mindset is um, I, I took the same approach that I took with, uh, with any marketing opportunity um, is, you know, do my due diligence. And I'm here in Miami. Right. I see um, HRT clinics in every corner, like fucking grocery stores in the hood. Mm. And I'm like, shit, this has to be legal. But how can I minimize the upfront investment and be able to achieve the same exact thing. So I said, fuck it. Let's just let, let me just launch a website and uh, and and see where it goes from there as a supplement uh, as a supplementary income, because right. I still had a three month contract with a, you know, with a company with a company called Quest Diagnostics. Yeah. So I started company, yeah. going into <laughs> I started going into forums. You know, one thing led to another. By the time you know it, within like about a month's time, I was averaging two thousand dollars in sales a day. All right, so where, who, where were you getting? Where were you getting the anabolics? Because you used to sell ten cc bottles, right? Of pretty much everything: testosterone, beginning, tremble, and Deca, all that stuff. Exactly. In the beginning, I was primarily focusing on local um, distributors and private labeling their stuff. Uh, okay. However, I had resources in California and in other areas that have very expensive HPLC machines. Uh, hence, the reasons why I had a phenomenal retention rate with the quality of my product. Um, that they would test the products that I would be interested in distributing right. um, prior to actually selling. Okay. So you just said to yourself, you know what? Yes, I know the anabolic steroids are controlled substances, but fuck it. I'm just going to put them on a website and sell them. With, and, now, how did you? there was a pretense that you would see a doctor somehow and get this prescribed, even though a lot Correct. of these drugs are not stuff that's produced in this country. How, how did that whole thing come about, that whole you know, uh, well, how, how did you did you just is, make something up, or I mean, how, what was the 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 guys that you were putting it under? Well, the guys was that um, I, there, there's a saying in business: if you're not unique, you better be cheap. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew that there's a, an obscene amount of steroid dealers everywhere. So, uh, what would enable me to differentiate myself enough <laughs> to, to grow quickly enough? So. I knew all the bodybuilders. I admired the bodybuilding um, industry, the powerlifting community. I idolized it since I was a child. So I said, hey, you know what? Let me market WFN as the um, go-to clinic online for bodybuilders and powerlifters, right. like, the, like the experts um, in, in protocols for them. And it stuck. It stuck and it grew like fucking crazy. Yeah, how, did you get, like- how did you get guys like Flex Wheeler and Kevin Lavroni to, to, to allow – their images to be associated with your website were they just did they not understand that that what you were doing was illegal or did they not care because you threw enough money at them and ct okay. fletcher dave ct fletcher CT allowed fletcher. him to open up yeah. iron addicts right. too so true uh, it's a very is a very basic is a very basic but um, impactful marketing technique i learned in the corporate world <laughs> um what i did was what i did was is like i took twenty five thousand dollars of my 401k yeah. Um, and and purchased twenty five thousand dollars worth at cost of those products, and I did research on big time influencers. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, drug dealers love uh, you know like people that do drugs. If they could get their drugs of choice for free, uh, guess yeah. what? They're gonna fucking get it. Yeah. So I got all these influencers. I did my research, and I just sent them. I just sent them free shit. Right. And I started telling them, I was like, hey, you know what? If my product is trash, I want you to talk about it. If my product is great, I want you to have a conversation with. Um, and the con- it's not and- to interrupt, 
but Jerry Ward made a video today sending you sent saying that you sent him shit. <laughs> So I know. He, yeah. I know. Oh, by I, the way, Rich, thank you for not sending me anything. I, I appreciate <laughs> it. I don't want to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, thank you. I, I don't. The F, they, they would have been at my house in 30 seconds arresting me, probably. <laughs> go ahead. Keep uh, going. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead, Grit. Uh, so, Grit. so, as I was saying, um, and, you know, that strategy, that strategy clicked, man. Um, I had people basically calling me asking me to sponsor them. Wow. It, it, like I wasn't going out to them. Um, who were your number of, who was your top five people you had, you sponsored? My top five people, uh, top five people was, uh, you would have, um, I, I had, uh, I had Mike, Mike Rashid. I had, um, I had Kevin Lavrone, Chris Cormier. I had Ronnie Coleman. I had, um, Dan. I had, um, Dan, you know, like, you know, Stan Effin, but Stan really wasn't like, he was huge and respected in the powerlifting community, but not like in, in the, from a social media perspective. And, uh, and oh, I forget and, Kali Muscle, even though he what, denied it. What were you paying yeah. these guys to, to to represent you? Man, my payroll, by, uh, about six months before it went down, was you know, like John could tell you, man. It's like it was about sixty thousand dollars a month just in sponsored mm-hmm. athlete payroll. Yeah, I have all. I had all this. What, so, what was the number? Who was the number one guy being paid? How much? Um, by the time in which they picked me up, definitely Kevin LeBron. How much? Per month, six thousand dollars a month. And what about Flex Wheeler? Uh, Flex Wheeler was about five thousand. Okay, now I understand why these guys wanted that money because they didn't want to work, and that that was, a, I'm sure, paying some of their bills. But didn't they say to themselves, you know, if I am sponsored by a, an illegal steroid website, uh, technically I am promoting this site, even though they didn't own it. They still could be pulled into it, which is probably what happened, I'm sure. And you'll tell us once you got arrested, right? Correct. But so, that's the reason why. You see, my frustration, my most frustration on the matter is not the fact that, is not the fact that, um, what you may call it, that I was engaging in illegal activity. It was the fact that I was 100% transparent with them. You know, going to the public <laughs> and saying, you no, know, going to the public and saying, hey, you know what? Richard yeah. never told me this was illegal. Right. Or this other bullshit. Like, bullshit. That's bullshit. Right, right. It bullshit, man. It's like I can understand you. They're greedy. They were greedy, these guys. Yeah, I could I could understand. I could and that's the reasons why I had that little bit of resentment to specific people because fuck you, I took care of you. You paid them a and lot of like, money. Not, yeah. And they ran hey, for the I'm fucking not, hills. They ran for the fucking hills because yeah. they're cowards. I fucking hate that. Did shit. they rat you out? Did they cooperate with the government? I'm sure they I did. I fucking hate that. That happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. They had to have cooperated, right? Because otherwise they yeah. probably were being threatened with being prosecuted, I'm sure. Right? Easy. Easy. Yeah. And Dave, that's a big part of the reason why Richard was so salty in the beginning. But I have to say, I've known Richard from before he was in prison, while he's in prison, and now after prison. And I could say that I see it such a change in him as far as being humbled as a person in a good way. Yeah. So you know how they say prison, you know, does things even though it's a bad, you don't want to be there. I definitely see a good change in Richard, so I wanted to add that. You know what you learn, and Richard, you could you could also um, tell me if I'm right or wrong, but you learn to just say, you know what, forgive people and say, you know what, let's move on, because you know what, when you when you're in jail, look, I was in jail, John was in jail, Gray was in jail. We were there for a reason, you know what I mean? We did something wrong, so you you, you can't really say this guy's a fucking asshole when you're actually were doing something wrong, you know. Bro, so you got to forgive. I was forgive. the only one. Dave, I was the only one in jail that would fucking admit it, dude. I'm here. I'm a fucking. I'm the biggest asshole. Oh, I'm a fucking asshole. I am a fucking asshole. I'm a fucking momo. What a fucking loser I am. Everybody else is in jail, dude. I didn't do no. Bro, my girlfriend ratted. This one ratted. They're all on the fucking phone with their girlfriends on the payphone. Dad, you tell that motherfucker. I know what he did. You tell him that when I get out of here, and I'm sitting here going. Holy fuck. What am I? What, look at you fucking guy. You know what I mean? Nobody once, nobody admitted to me, you know, and I know because there's everybody in jail is a rat. Anyway, they can't wait to get dirt on you so they right. can go fucking run and say, but I was the only guy in it going, I'm a fucking ass. I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? I now, knew it. No, Richard, I got to ask you this. And I've said this before. And I know um, John brought it up on uh, his uh, interview with you. I said right from the beginning, Richard Rodriguez has got to be out of his mind because he he knew had to have known he was going to get caught eventually, and you admit that you knew you were going to get caught, but you didn't think you were going to get the amount of time that you got. What what was your mindset going into this? How what was your well, escape plan? Well, part of my secession plan was um, 
one, knowing that uh, it, it was illegal, was uh, towards the part where I, when when I actually invested that amount of money in Iron Addicts yeah. um, in Miami, that's when I invested another million dollars into um, WFM, but specifically to hire compliance lawyers. And, that, and John can vouch for that because um, we even recruited at one point in time uh, Rick Collins to to evaluate the infrastructure. What did he because say? I, because I was really serious. Right. Uh, he, he said it's it, it, like I'm actually crazy <laughs> if I want to legalize it, at that, you know, the way in which it was structured. However, he can he can assist us uh, in what needs to be taken out and, 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 and what needs to, you know, and what needs to be in place in order right. for, you know, in, in order for it to happen. Right. You can't sell trend balloon on a website without a prescription. I mean, that that's there's no way that's compliant. Right. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So the fact that it's they, only approved for animals too yeah, may yeah, also yeah, have yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bit of a problem. So that's We're the reason why animals, you John. guys that's, that's the reasons why if you guys have really saw uh, what transpired a few months prior to my incarceration, you may have heard of a company that, that Michael She was promoting called the Hormone Club. Yes. That was WFN's <laughs> secession plan. It was the hormone. Ah, group. Okay, I got you. Um, it was going to be pretty much uh, what they're doing now: the testosterone right. and all the basic stuff. And then I was going to shut down WFN, have the hormone club, yeah. have the. You uh, waited too long, the- uh, Richard. Wait, okay. <laughs> I want to ask Richard. Hey, Richard. So, h- how's the family though? Because I, I remember when you got busted, it broke my heart. Because I know you were married. You have a little kid, right? It w- w- wasn't it? Yeah. Did you? Did everything uh, work out with all that, or no? Did family um, no, members turn on um, you? Uh, no, um, uh, I'm divorced. Uh, yeah, see, that's how I know, but however, however, you know what, um, you brought up an interesting point about learning how to forgive. I have a phenomenal co-parenting relationship with my ex-wife. Okay. A lot of the things in which I've achieved personally is because of her. She was my muse for over 20 years. She continues to be my muse as my ex-wife. Um, uh, my son is a blessing. Um, it took us three and a half years to have him. I fucking love him. I, I'll probably go to jail if, if for him, like, you know, any other time without even guessing twice for the love that I have for my son. I did that. Yeah. And you, and you, you know yeah, what the crazy and, and, part is? You took a higher yeah. sentence, right? So that they would leave your wife yeah. out of it. Was that correct? Correct. Or my yeah. PSI showed, um, you know, showed, uh, showed 26, 26 months specifically, but when they brought in my wife and strong armor because they wanted me to rat the my my suppliers, I was like, "Look, fuck you! I don't bite the hand that feeds me." That's when they arrested my wife, uh, and and then when they arrested my wife, I broke down and I told them, "I was like, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rat uh, I'm not gonna rat." However, I figured out a way if it's okay with you guys to negotiate, give you guys money, put her on a plea deal that will get, render her a victim on my plea deal, right. and you guys make money. My wife, you know, my wife is is, is How happy. How much at money home. did you have to give him? Eight million dollars. You had that much saved still? Wow! Congratulations. The only money that I had, the only money that I had saved was yeah. to uh, like, uh, it was was to was to actually um, spare my wife. Rich, wow. I wish you know buried what? some of that shit. We could use that shit. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now you know what though? The money you can always make money yes. when you get out of jail. You can one hundred percent. But you can't. But he left his family time. with no money, Greg. That was the problem. But you can't make. But you can't. Listen, I'm sure it's a couple bucks that his wife had. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, come on, we all we all played that game. You know, you know what happens. Uh, you know we can't. You you can always make that money back, but you can't make back time. Fuck that shit. Fuck the money. It's not worth the time. Now, a lot of guys I agree with you. Here. Now, my, with you know, I want to, I got to put this out there because my wife would say what you did was very selfish because you had a, a baby, you had a wife, and you did this knowing that you were, you potentially could have gotten arrested and gotten her arrested and your, your son could have been, son, right? Yeah. Yes. Your son could have been put in foster care or, or something like that because of your wife and you would. So, I mean, how did you in your mind, you know, deal with that potential scenario knowing going into that? Uh, uh, it, it, prior, prior to, um, you know, it's like prior to, th- to the thought process, it all goes back to what I told you. It's like um, plausible deniability. Hence the reasons why I never I never had her involved. You see, what people don't know is that what the feds did was basically a strong arm tactic because the people that were really managing the accounting aspects of WFN was yeah. never my wife. My wife was just the accountant and the, and the controller for, um, for Iron Addicts. Right. And that was it. She didn't know jack shit about WFN. Right. 
And wow. she she was always trying to figure out where the fuck all this money was coming in and all these and all these cars. Oh, so you, oh, so you weren't even telling her you were selling the illegal stories. I mean, she had to no. see the website. Didn't she see the website? She didn't even know about the website, dude. Did it, even if she did, she wouldn't have known that. Dave, hey, 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 John, Listen, my hey. wife would have known if I was selling Trembolone on, on on my website. That, that it wasn't the right know, Your wife knows she what Trembolone is. John, your wife had but no the idea what Trembolone is. The difference is everyone got benefits from what he sold. Anything. Nobody. She did, she did not know anything about the WFN website. Wow. Um, it got to the point, and, and it got to the point, the only thing that I was making my wife aware was towards the latter part when uh, Iron Addicts took off and she was heavily involved in the Hormone Club. Okay. That 100%. Now, but prior to that, but prior to that, because I knew, because I because I knew what transpired with Biogenesis. I knew what transpired with Balco. And she, she, she was my life, man. She gave me, a, she gave me a son and there was no way in fucking hell knowing that what I was doing was illegal, that I ever wanted her to be remotely associated with it, man. Now, let me ask true? you a question, Rich, something I never got to ask you before. If you could do this all over again, knowing what you know now, going to prison, he'd all never this do bullshit, it. He'd never do it. Would you do it again? No. Fuck no. No way. Yeah. No because, criminal because, because it's just like I was talking to Dave uh, before I was going live. I got an MBA from an Ivy League school. I was accustomed to making over, you know, it's like well, collectively my wife and I, we uh, on, on a bad year was about two hundred, two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. That's perfectly yeah. fucking great. You know, we were living in Central Park West, you know, in, in, in fucking Manhattan. So I would have figured out an alternative um, to, you know, or me, you know, to to supplement my income. However, it just grew so fucking fast that by the time you know it, it was like I was already you, balls deep. It's, you get it. what happens is you, you get, get greedy. You get greedy. You get greedy because the money's too easy. You can't stop. That's the problem. It's addictive. Yes. It's addictive. I own the gym. I make tons of fucking money, but I could not stop that lifestyle. I'd go home without out of my house. I fucking come back with ten grand. It just was. It was like sick. You know. Listen, guys. When I, when I was going, father, Greg. When I was going. What's when that? I, was going through, I had to go through the books of how much money and all the sales that he went through each month. When I would look at this shit, I was like, dude, this shit's insane. How much how per much month was he making was, average? Millions. Millions. Wow. And especially towards the end, that's when he made the most money. How many Rich, customers right? did you have, uh, Richard? Um, I Rich, wasn't it 60,000? Is it 50, 60,000 in that contact database? Correct. Yeah, about wow. 50, yeah. 60,000. But just to give you some insight on, the, uh, on, uh, on a breakdown. I averaged about 150 to 235 orders a day. Um, on a bad day, I averaged about $26,000 a day in sales. Wow. On a great day, I'll give you a perfect example. That video that you, when you bow, bad mouth me, yeah. uh, Mr. You uh, probably Mr. sold Bobo, more that day, right? I basically purchased a, <laughs> uh, a Maybach. Um, you know, at that, and I thank you for it. You're very they welcome. Asked. Too bad they did they take it away from you, or you still got it? No, I I said he's out of his mind because you know what? People would contact me and say, "Dave, is this stuff good? Should I buy it?" I said, "Look, it probably is good from what I'm hearing." I said, "But you're going to go into a database, like he said, and when he gets arrested, they're going to have your name." I said. He's and, out of his mind, they said. And Dave, in that database, okay, because I had to search the entire thing. I spent months searching right. for every big name, right? You don't know how many UFC fighters, I'm Olympic sure. athletes were in oh, there. Yeah. And, I, and I was just typing. It was like going names. to Amazon and buying steroids. Well, how easy yeah, is that? You wouldn't <laughs> believe it. And you know what's crazy? There's a lot of influencers now who pretend they're natural and they're not. They, I want to go back in the database because they weren't rev relevant back <clears> then. <throat> That's I want right. to go back and put their names now and see if we find, especially the Liver King. Maybe the Liver King ordered from you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Liver King is natural. Yeah. Now you're making up a lie. Yeah, how great would that be? I, I want to look up that guy. He's natural. Let me ask That's you this question. Funny. Now, there was a point that you were posing as a doctor too, Richard. Weren't you? Weren't you Dr. Actually, Richard Rodriguez? Uh, actually, no. I'll tell you exactly All why right. the reasons why that actually happened. Um <laughs> There was the people kept coming uh, coming to me uh, and referring to me as Dr. Rodriguez because of the fact that of my knowledge, the way in which I used to present myself to individuals when it came to giving protocols and breakdowns on the uh, on the, on the drugs, it was you know it's like they're like oh so they'll so they'll oftentimes refer to me as hey Dr. Rodriguez and they used to tell them I'm not a doctor I'm not a doctor no but but, 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 but Richard you were you were posing I thought as the, as the hormone replacement doctor who was prescribing this stuff that's at least what people told me when they would buy from you that you were the prescribing doctor so to speak 
Well, that that was their <laughs> assumption because I never told them blatantly out of my mouth, out of my mouth, that I was a doctor. Dude, it's like Tony Hughes. They think you know a lot of people think yeah. he's a yeah. doctor. I love now, Tony. Now, what ha- what happened with the whole? celebrity aspect of it were you were you trying to out some of these celebrities like mark warlberg and roman reigns of the wwe what what give me that story i don't really know the, all the details on that um when i when i when i was contemplating and going to trial uh there's something that's called um tried and true statements and those tried and true statements gives you a breakdown of each and every single person that has been interviewed that if you were to go to trial uh would, would take the stand against you Mm-hmm. So um, that was the, the biggest culture shock for me because I was like, wow, man, these are these, some of these people. I was like, I really like, like helped substantially. I'm like, who was on like, the list? Flex Wheeler? Definitely Flex Wheeler. Like the names that I have named lately, I'm a, I am at liberty to discuss. Okay. Um, however, there's a lot more names in there. There was a total, let's just say there was a total of 23 people that got me into a deep fucking state of depression because. Unfortunately, to the magnitude in which I've helped them, I've actually thought of them as friends, not just... You were paying them, Richard. You were paying them. You weren't their friends. You were paying but above, them. But above and beyond that. It was above and beyond that. But what did like, they do? They, they, they turned him in? No, you know what he did? They rattled on him. Listen, listen, Dave. They rattled on him. Listen, listen, Dave, saw, saw, no, well, no, no, but this is the thing. Well, they I, saw, I saw Richard's direct communication via text message to every single person in his life at that time, including some of those celebrities, right. including John Romano. John, I seen all your texts to, to Richard. You know what I mean? So he was friendly with some of them, helping them more than you normally would as just a client. Well, he's uh, a good, he was a good guy. He, he thought he had yeah. a relationship with yeah, these guys. These guys he was, a, the he was a paycheck for him. Yeah. The guys you help the most are the ones who fuck you the hardest. Yeah. I'm sure Richard will be like fucking A right. He, he, he paid me the least, right. and I'm the he paid me the least, and I'm the only guy who took his calls. So. What, what did I you do? John, what was your role over there? Were you writing articles for him? What were you doing? Me? I would yeah. I was content for his website. Yeah, yeah articles. You were probably was the only person who wasn't who wasn't liable in that sense because you you were just <laughs> paid right. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh I think Romano was in Mexico during that time, am I right? Yep, I was. Yeah. Wait, Dave, yeah, we, I, we, was actually, I was <laughs> actually going to write for him. John called me, and then I talked to Richard, and I was going to start writing for him, but then nothing, I didn't hear back for him. But they, we, we talked. I would have wrote for him. I, I You'd no be problem. right back in jail. What are you, crazy? What? No, I didn't. That's how stupid me. you are. No, but he asked uh, me you're a convicted job. felon. You're going to go me. write for and promote a steroid John website? Wrote for me to, wait, John wrote for me. How dumb would you? You're lucky. You're lucky that you didn't write for him. Wait, John wrote you would have been the first there. person they arrested. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you guys want to hear the craziest? What are you no, about? no, not you. I said Greg. Greg, Greg got in trouble. And then I talked that, to John. You're then promoting a steroid website. website. John. But wait, listen. We, you know what the craziest part right about this story right, is? If let me explain something to you. I talked to Rick Collins about this. If there's a site out there, website out there that is selling illegal steroids, and you let them use your image and receive funds for that. You are participating in this uh-huh. in this conspiracy to distribute anabolic steroids illegally. Therefore, you can be prosecuted. Whether the, but the, they never discussed that when I. Well, but you're a them. dummy. You should. The first person you call is Rick Collins and say, "Hey, Rick, is this illegal for me to do?" I had a. I'm not going to say the website. There's a website out there that is paying some bodybuilders right now. They also indirectly contacted me about being on one of their like little webcasts they have type things. Uh, I know not even talking about their products, but it was going to be sponsored by them. I said, are you out of your mind? I talked to Rick. He was like, he's like, uh, Dave, do you have to even ask me this? He goes, you can't do this. <laughs> you You'll be the is, first dude. person they arrest. So, I said, I know. I'm so Dave, you, Richard, know you know who it is. And they threw a lot of money at me too, believe me. Yeah. Being ignorant Richard, of you the know law who these does, does ignorance is not That's what I'm So if you're even if he's ignorant of what they're doing, he's still guilty. Listen, I'm not going to mention that company's name, but let me tell you something. That company is out to get people. So you're lucky you didn't fucking do it because they're out there. I don't want to go to jail anymore. Just like Richard yeah. will never go to jail because he's too smart now. He understands he made yeah. a mistake. He's not going to go back there. Same here. Same with John. You he don't have to. You can make more money legally. Way more money legally. Well, Greg, you're Momo. You just said you were going to write for him. So how smart are you? I, I didn't know. I wasn't going to write about <laughs> that. If they know. take your column that you're writing about farts and put it on the, the, the steroid website, then you're participating in promoting the steroid sales. Well, look, wait, Dave. Say, 
But I would have played dumb. Ahead, I would have said, I don't but know he didn't do it. Dude, I'm <laughs> Ignorance is not a, is, is no excuse. No, you would have been arrested. And the they would have said, "Hey, Greg, part. listen. If you want listen, to testify quick. against Richard, we'll let you off. Otherwise, we're going to prosecute you." I would you. never have testified. I know you'd I'd be say, back in jail again. Exactly. I'd say, "Fuck your mother." That's what I'd say. Fuck you. My name is fuck your mother. Prove it. Listen, listen, Greg. Greg, listen to this. Dave, listen to this. Yeah. The fucking craziest part about this, okay, is that. At the end, I saw communication between him and Dan Blazerian. That motherfucker was going to pimp his shit, too. Oh, really? You guys know who Dan Blazerian yeah. is now. What was yeah, his, so look, what was look, his look. angle? Well, the thing was that uh, after I saturated the uh, bodybuilding market, practically having about 80% of that market, yeah. I wanted to um, branch out into other industries. Yeah, well, you aren't already. making enough money already. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wanted to go legally. <laughs> no, he was trying to make more money. That's all. Yeah, but by making more money. But the products in which I was selling in the porn industry were were completely legal. I had I had two doctors. Uh, the company was called Sweet Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Uh, we were doing a yeah, shot uh, for the cock. He puts the shot in the cock. Yeah, the shot in the, the cock. Uh, we Caver, had Caver Jack. Yeah, we had uh, <coughs> we had gummy bear infused by um, Viagra and Cialis. I know Greg probably tried that. Part. I, I, yeah, I let me ask you a question, Richard. I, where were you? Where were you purchasing? I tried it. <laughs> where were you purchasing uh, the gummy bear um, Viagra? You tried uh, it? I had a doctor out of Ball Harbor um, that um, pretty much took care took care of pretty much everything from you know from start to finish, and right. I just paid him. Uh, I just paid him a management fee to handle it. <laughs> uh, so they weren't really I, legally being purchased. Oh, wait, did you give John the shot in the car? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh Wait, I want to hear about John Shaw. I did it myself. What are you talking I've about? I've got a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> what is I'll, that? I'll guys- Wait, I could go in the database and look it up if John <laughs> ever got you that shit up. sent. I'm innocent, 100%. Give, All right, because I did it myself. Fucking order. I did it in Mexico fucking ages ago. <laughs> did it work? You know what the <laughs> funny part is? is you know- see, actually, it was Duchesne. And that's how long ago I did it. Wow. Was when I knew Duchesne. Oh, really? Because, I'll give you yeah, guys. Listen, because we didn't believe you know, we could actually four hour hard. How, how did they catch you, Richard? Oh, Richard, what was the what was how long were they oh. investigating you, and how long how did they catch you eventually? Um, you know what? Up until the point in which they arrested me, there was never actually a a, a, a case on me because they oh, really? they were saying it's like yeah. What ended up happening was. Um, Let's face it. The name is spread around all over bodybuilding. Yeah. Uh, my former friend of 22 years, in which I would not be disclosing his name specifically, but everybody here knows who the hell he is, got popped in New Jersey. Um, and um, he started saying, hey, you know what? Uh, delay my sentence. I know this company out of uh, Miami. The second wow. he got popped, six months later, handcuffs on who me. Who was the guy? Gilberto Mundo. Gilberto, we know. I know Gilberto since That's your he brother-in-law, him. right? He started it all. Wow. Other people, yeah. other people. And you know, wait, coming. wait, Richard. Before you say anything else, the most fucked up part about Gilberto Mundo is he was already in legal issues for steroids when before he even fucking met Richard. Richard had no idea, so he had it out. And he's still ratting people. Now he's actually in prison. Okay, Richard bought him a condo. He was like taking. Oh, dude, you know how much money? Know, he, you but know he didn't much- fucking know. He was making sixty thousand dollars a month with me. What? Oh my god! Sixty thousand in a condo a in my. So how did he get caught? Hey, I don't know. He got. Listen, that motherfucker has like ten lives. He's been caught so many times. The government For keeps on using him as an informant. Listen, if you go I'm look at if you go look at his dollars. fucking legal record, he's got like eight hundred lines of legal problems. Since <laughs> two thousand and four. You, know, you, you want to know something? Where I met him the first time. He won the Eastern USA bodybuilding show. I don't even remember what year. It was when I was working for Blackman. The guy was a freak, and uh, I thought he was going to be a great pro bodybuilder, and then he just disappeared. And then the next thing I hear him, he's he's arrested for you know for whatever happened. You know, he's actually finally now he he violated his his probate his whatever deal he had with the government. He's for the hundredth time. Now. For the hundredth yeah. time. <laughs> wasn't it your wasn't it your brother in law? No, man. Um, he, he was like my best friend of 22 years, wow. man, to the standpoint where at one point in time we were so close friends uh, that I was actually going to um, be engaged and, ma- and marry one of his close cousins. Wow. Um, like yeah, we, he, was he, like, would, he would like take care of your Max as your son, right? Yeah, yeah, he would take care of Max and like hang. It was part of the family. I was there. I saw it. You know. It was- yeah, man. That's the reasons why. That's the reasons why when I heard his name uh, through, the, through the indictment. Um, I contemplated suicide three times uh, in, um, oh, no. in, in prison. 
Oh. Uh, first time, first time was when I saw his name as the main cooperator. I didn't give a shit about it. In all honesty, man, I didn't give a fuck about Flex Wheeler being one of them. I didn't give a fuck about the other, the other right, 20 you plus knew they, You knew they'd turn. You, you had to expect Exactly. That. Yeah. But when I saw his name and when I saw my brother from my, fa- from my father's side, which I don't want to name his name because I can't. Right. Uh, that was him, your brother. That, that's it. Your exactly. Uncle. And uh, that, that, fucking, that fucking crushed me. That crushed me. And fortunate enough, um, I had a blessing of having a uh, – a G27, it's a, it's a huge gang, Puerto Rican gang. I had one of the leaders that was my cellmate in NBC Brooklyn um, during that time. And he prevented me from actually overdosing, man. Wow. I ended up buying wow. K2 and a whole bunch of shit. I, dude, I, when I saw that, man, it's like I was like, I wanted to get rid of my life. And yeah. the first lawyer I had that I fired, the guy was like, oh, my God, your exposure is going to be 25 fucking years. So now I have the, pot- the potentials of being in prison for 25 years. My brother and my best friend of 22 years being cooperators. I'm like, shit, what the fuck is a reason to live for? Right. You know, and that was the first uh, first re- um, time in which I tried to attempt to commit suicide. Second time was my step pops passed away. Uh. My step pops passed away and he was he was close to me, man. And they couldn't give me a furlough because they said he wasn't my biological father. Uh. And man, I that, that day is like I was devastated. And my third time was when I received my divorce papers. Right. Yeah, that'd be. Sad. I remember. Richard, I remember those times I, too. Yeah. I got to ask Richard a question. Hold on. Now, when we're doing these interviews here, and you say like Flex Wheeler and all that stuff, have you heard from any of these guys? Like, dude, you've been saying my name on the internet. Uh, you're. <laughs> oh, I saw. Have I saw. Yeah, shit of him, probably. Ahead, I'm Rich. sure. Tell have him, I tell not? Him. Of course, man. It's like I would. I would love to show you my messages on Instagram. Like man. after this. Listen, show, you know what he did? Name. He tagged. He tagged one of them because he thought, you know what? I'll forgive the guy. Whatever. No hard feelings. He tagged one of them. I'm not going to say the name unless he wants to. Flex and Wheeler. The guy, <laughs> he was Flex Wheeler. He tagged, I'm a, he, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Dave, I'm going to send you um because I hate that fucker anyway. So, so uh, Flex, Flex Wheeler. Flex. So uh, send me um. I hate Flex Wheeler so much that when I fired him, I. I, I um I made shirts that said FFW fuck Flex Wheeler, and I had everybody in WFN and Iron Addicts rocking them. Oh, oh shirts you made with, with that on. Yeah, shirts. But so, no, but, but why no, did you fire, why did you fire him? What happened? Because um he was a person that was shady as fuck, man. It's like since day <sighs> one when he when he was when I hired him. Uh, because he had a, a direct relationship slash partnership with a company called Live Well Pharmaceuticals out of Panama City, he was he couldn't fathom how the fuck I was uh, compounding um, um, certain drugs of 500 milligrams and not crystallizing and and looking at the HPLC reports and saying right. that what I claimed it is. Right. So he was so he would go to my chemist unbeknownst to me and be like, hey man, can you give me the recipe? Can you tell me how this is compounded? Oh, no way. So I'll have my, my, my chemist come to me like, hey Rich, you told Flex Wheeler to call me? I'm like, fuck no. So I would call him like, yo man, what the fuck you doing? He's like, there's no man, I'm just curious because I wanna, I wanna know how to effectively market your product. How is that fucking relevant, you douchebag? You know, like, just do your fucking job, shut the fuck up, take the $4,000 yeah. and, leave, and leave my company steal alone. It. Oh, Rich, what that was that? that? Was that the 500 mega, uh, milligram testosterone product you had? Yeah, the test 500, the test 500, and the stack 500. Yeah, because no one ever believed it actually had 500 in it. Now, when yeah. you, hold on, Rich, when you crash. say when you say you're a chemist, was do you actually mean a real guy in a chemistry lab? Or are you talking about like John Romano in Mexico making your stuff for you? Because <laughs> <laughs> technically, John in Romano. Spot, uh, let me just let me be diplomatically yes. correct. Ja Romano was an inspiring chemist. He may not have not have had the license, but it does not necessarily mean he did not have the capacity to possibly acquire that license. Oh, okay. So the people that were um, that worked for me were inspiring chemists. Oh, okay, all right. So, so they wait, were, they were, I, I want to get back to some Richard. So do you think after talking to us today, right? Do you think like somebody like Flex Will or one of the other guys that you named is good? You're gonna get like an email or a fucking message, like, bro. If you bring my name up one more fucking time, you think you'll get one of those deals or? No. Well, I'll just I'll just tell them this. Um, one thing that you learn in prison, right, is that um, if you keep your fucking mouth shut and you don't write and your papers are clean, you get connected to some really high power influencing people. Um, right. I would love for somebody to threaten me. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> I've helped a lot of people in prison because of my business um, acumen right. to the standpoint where I've gotten connected to some really high power people that it's like, it's just a matter of a phone call. It's like, okay, Flex, you want to threaten me? 
All right, no worries. I'm not. Oh, but this is the thing bacon. that's stupid about it is that he tagged Flex not because he's like, you know what? It's water under the bridge. Let's just be friends. Flex DM'd him and said, "Hey, you motherfucker, don't ever tag me in a oh, post." Oh, really? Again. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I saw how much money do you eye. think you paid Flex over the course of his uh, contract with you? Easily. Yeah. Let's say uh, four thousand dollars a month, two and a half years. Uh, I thought he got five grand a month. You said about uh, well, give or take, because sometimes oh. I. I because I, I also had coupon codes with some of the athletes. Oh, okay. And those coupon codes, depending on, on the frequency that they would be uh, redeemed, yeah. I would give them also a, a higher percentage. Gotcha. So it was a multi-tier contract with some of the athletes. So how many months did you pay him that much for? Easily, I easily He was easily my athlete for at least minimally 22, 24 months. Oh, that's a lot of money. Okay. That's yeah. a lot of money. And none of these guys <laughs> got in trouble. None. I, none. They all, they all oh. ratted him out. That's why. Now, let me ask you Dude, a question. I, the celebrities, Mark Wahlberg, what, why release his name? Why say Mark Wahlberg? Why say uh, Roman Reigns? What, what was, because you seem like you didn't rat on anyone, yet these celebrity names were released by you. Why? Because just like, just like my brother um, and my, um, and my best friend of 22 years were huge shocks to see in the, um, in the, and some of the, some of the case um, files, right? Um, their names too. Why? Because um, while um, but wouldn't it pre- Jerry wouldn't it War- behoove you to be, be able to? Wouldn't you want to protect those guys so that they would when you got out they would be like, man, this guy did right by me, you know? Exactly, and they didn't, and that's the reasons why I'm doing this. No, I'm saying, wouldn't you want to protect those guys' names instead of releasing their names? Is what I'm saying. I would. I would have if. If when I initially reached out to them during the t- during the during, during the time in which I was you know being prosecuted, they would have you know they would have picked up the phone and be like, "Oh hey, come you know on, what? you you think that Mark Warburg's going to pick up the phone when you're in when you're under indictment? He, he's probably afraid that you're trying to set him up or or you're going to record the phone call. I mean, come on. Yes, yes. If we had if we didn't have the relationship that we had, you see, I worked with the guy for six months during the movie Pain and Gain. Right. I did not charge him a dime. Mm-hmm. I did not charge him a dime because I knew the power that he possessed right. I, it, 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 with celebrities. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to be with this person. The, like, you know, like distract myself from, uh, from the Iron Attic opportunities, from WFN and all that other stuff. Because I know if I help him with protocol advice, with dieting advice, and, right. and, and anything in which he practically wants, I know that moving forward, if I want to get involved with any other celebrity, right. this guy's going to open doors. Of course. Same same thing, same thing with Roman Reigns, uh, and, it, and, it, and it worked. It worked. Right, but I'm, what I'm saying is if you would have just not even brought these guys up, now you're out of prison, don't you think these guys would be much more likely to say, hey, if you need anything, I'm here for you. Now they're going to say, fuck you, because you obviously you outed their names. That's one thing that... But um, the thing is, Rich, before you answer that, Rich has changed a lot from then till now. I don't think now he would have done or said the same things as he did back then. Cause he's a very different man that I know now that he was. Yeah, definitely. In the beginning, in the beginning, um, it's a good he, thing. He highlighted that in the beginning, I was full of resentment. I wanted to, um, I wanted to highlight, you know, like out. He wanted to kill there. everybody. He wanted to beat the shit out of everyone. I don't blame him, but you know something. what? But you were doing exactly what you were pissed at Flex Wheeler was doing to you. You were trying to ruin their careers in a sense. No, but you, you don't mad. understand something. I, I've been with Richard is, and his mindset is too. These guys could have reached out to him and said, hey, listen, don't say a word. I got a lawyer that'll fucking help you out. You know, Mark Wahlberg, with all the got all he's got, could have fucking helped Richard out. Could have sent, could have got Richard's wife a message, tell Richard not to fuck like, him. Worry. Like many. Like you know many. why? You know why they don't do that, Greg? Am I right or wrong? Greg, you know why they don't do that? Dave. You know why? Because well, if they, Richard would have taken those text messages or messages and, and released them. Now, no, 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 no. Now he I shows complicity. Not if they're going to help him. They have not to completely distance themselves. Him. You're wrong. Richard, I never, Richard, am I, I right I or wrong? You're wrong, Greg. I never done that, but Greg, but Greg brings up an interesting point because the reasons why I didn't out a lot of names is because they did exactly what Greg said. Mm. They reached out to people that couldn't be directly uh, tied right. to me and say, hey, don't tell Richard that I will take care of him. Right. Not listen, to worry. You know listen. what to me, honestly, though, you know what to me, the saddest thing, because don't forget, I've been here this whole time. <laughs> Ask Richard himself. This guy was a millionaire, right? Driving all these fancy cars, all these things, right? He used to high lifestyle. He's in prison 
he doesn't even have 50 cents for a fucking right. potato chip bag, right? How many people reach out to him to help him out? Or right, right. That That's a different story. And that was in, in his prison, fucking yeah, that, head. That was in his head. Look at all these people. I paid all this fucking money. Fuck. At least send me a fucking $20 so I can make phone calls to my mother, to my family, to my friends and buy fucking potatoes. But that's the thing. Listen, what I was saying about the Wahlberg thing was if Wahlberg... You're you just don't like that, Wahlberg because he beat you up at the limelight. No, he didn't beat me up. I <laughs> his bouncers beat him up. His crew kicked the shit yeah, out of his me. Crew. I had him squealing like a hog. But that's the end of it. <laughs> listen, because uh, I had him in headlock and he wasn't getting out. But re- regardless, listen. It always comes back to Wahlberg. Uh, every single well, listen. Listen, but we got to understand. Wahlberg. Why would... If, if Wahlberg would have reached out to Richard and, and would have offered him... He's like, you know, listen, I got a guy. I got a fucking lawyer, bro. Don't say anything. Richard's not going to say, oh, let me throw Wahlberg under the bus now because he's trying to help me. Richard would be like, he would have felt a little peace. He would have felt like, oh, look at this guy's looking out for me. He, You know, he's Mark Wahlberg, bro. He's got fucking money. So when he tells me he's going to get a lawyer to help me, you really think that Richard's going to fuck Rich- it doesn't matter. Yeah, but Greg, you know what? He, I, he's too big a celebrity. He couldn't risk it. I, I understand why. It sucks, and it's it's not cool. But he couldn't risk it. There was no yeah, way. But you got to understand. But you got to understand this, Dave, because to to highlight what you just said, celebrities. Who gives a fuck about celebrities? When it right. comes to a case of this magnitude, yeah. the people that should that should separate themselves and distance themselves. And when I looked at the docket sheet. The I athletes. respected them for distancing themselves the as athletes. athletes. Yeah. Why? Because you got another federal agency, USADA, which is the United States Anti-Doping right. Agency, that the second they find out that a fucking NFL player or somebody yeah. that's, that's reputable right. is, is, is doping, guess what? Those are the fucking names they want. Richard, these they, guys they, actually they use their own names in the database to order stuff? Yes. Yes. What a bunch of dummies. Some so did, no, but some did. But Rick, Dave, some changed their fucking names. But some idiots like UFC fighters, because yeah. I worked with Asada because Asada was going to help Richard get out faster. So I said, all right, I'll take the time. Let me help Asada go through the database. And I used to do ba- database management anyway for my old job. So right. I was very skilled in looking at the databases and, and, and doing the work that they needed. So I did a lot of work for them looking up names and some of the names of the fighters, right. they were all fucking in there under the sub, but some other people who are creative put it under the wife's name, right. the daughter's right. name, the neighbor's name, a made up name. Sure. So there was things like that too. But how do you know that a guy couldn't just say, Hey, I happen to be personal friends. I, I knew Richard. I grew up with Richard. You know, I'm going to give him this. I'm helping him out. He needs help. I'm going to help him out. If one of my friends was in trouble, I would fucking help him out. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't care. Let them fucking come. You but that's, the, bur- the burden of proof is on them. Yeah, but but you see what? You brought up an interesting point, um, Greg, because, okay. because that goes back to how you were fucking raised. Right. I was raised to be loyal as fuck. You know how many right. people, when I, from the beginning, even my ex-wife told me, it's like, do not hire Mundo because Mundo's a piece of shit and he's going to fuck you worse than he's ever did. Yeah. You know, and, and because I was loyal as shit, I hired and aligned myself with all the wrong people, even though there was numerous individuals that really, truly cared for me that told me, that, hey, don't do business with that person. Don't do the business with this person. Damn and because man. I was a good hearted person, which yeah, yeah. like, you know, you wear your I, heart I said, in your sleeve. That's why. Yeah. 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 That's why. Stay- same here, Richard, you know, but I had few people that helped me that I knew were good. And you could, any cop could fucking, you have access to my files. My files aren't, find somebody that I rat in because I didn't rat on nobody. Richard, I'm still friends with all the guys that fucking, it, it, one's in jail now. You know what I mean? He just got in right, jail. Right, we all were like that. I was the same way. I could have done zero time if I wanted right, to. I could have, I could have. But I forget almost everybody here has been in prison for that uh, kind of I, shit. Except I chose. I'm going to knock on wood that I'm not fucking going back. And, uh, and I also and I also want to highlight to you, Dave, yeah. that I also had that opportunity too. Yeah. I could have done zero time because yeah. look at Balco, um, for example. Right. I would have made Balco look like fucking baby news. Right. Just with the Major League Baseball, NFL, UFC. Oh, yeah. You could have gone crazy and out of those people. Yeah. So, and, and USADA, day one, day one I was incarcerated, day one they flew to Miami, to Miami and like, hey, Let's sit down. And I was like, fuck you, fuck right. you, fuck you, fuck are you. Are you, in retrospect, are you upset that maybe you should, that you even mentioned anyone's name at this point? If you had to do it again, is what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. Um, and I want to thank, uh, I want to thank unofficially, and I'll be doing it formally in the video, uh, 
I really want to thank Jerry Ward for the video that he launched um, uh, today. Um, it really changed my perspective, and I want to reach out to him personally to let him know what the reasonings say? behind behind those names. But most importantly, why I still hold resentments to some. Um, I I think that it's I think it's just time to just put this in the rearview mirror, right. and just and just be nothing but positive. And you know what? If those people come around my way, uh, and we could collaborate in some form of way, I would at least know how to best deal with them. What's your next What's your next business uh, adventure? Stay away uh, from the rats. Stay away from the rats. <laughs> Stay away. Jerry Ward's one of my best friends, and I love Wait. that fucking guy. Straight up, that's a Dude, straight he's up phenomenal. Yeah. He's phenomenal. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm a stubborn son of a bitch. And this morning, uh, John sent me the uh, John Bravo sent me his video. I watched the whole 14 minutes and. Do change my perspective, bro. Nobody, absolutely nobody, changes. Changes. What did he say? My, I didn't even. My... I didn't see the video. He said. He said. Um. In, in a nutshell, he says like, Rich, um, you were in an industry where it's natural for someone to distance themselves from you when you have, you know, when you when you get caught. That's what I said. You know, so holding resentment and naming names is not necessarily going to do something to benefit the reputation that you still have in the industry. Right. That's, that's what I was trying you, to say to you too. The same thing. You know, so, and, and when, and, and he was saying, it's like, look, it's like everybody has gone through it. And when I, when, when I thought about it and, and, and I listened to him and I'm like, and I'm like, fuck, if it's one thing I learned about, uh, about life is that you can't just, you can't argue with the truth. And right. he, and he, and I'm not, I'm not a career criminal. I'm never going to fucking prison again. <laughs> Amen. Like, like I'm too, never bro. going to prison again. He was never even, in trouble so far, prior. I won't even suffer. I won't even go as far as fucking jaywalking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Richard, <laughs> but, you, you, you know what? You're saying what you're saying. is I believe it. I can see it in your eyes. And you know what? I said the same thing. I won't even sell a controversial nutritional supplement because if Rick Collins says don't do it, I don't do it. Because I, don't, so I know I got a bullseye on me. And so you got to be very <laughs> careful, you know, now. Dude, I live by the creed. Even a fish would never get caught if it would just learn to shut its mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to remember. And you, know and what, you, can't, you can't bang your head against the wall over things that have, have already happened and are out of your control. All you're going to do is get a sore head and the situation is still the same. So you got to move on.com. Would you get back into the gym business, Richard? No, because it's too... Um... Richard, stay it's, away from all that shit. It, it, it's too, it's too, it's too resource intensive. My plans, just to guys give you some insight. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting some really good traction with some um, huge uh, media outlets. So uh, John and I are focusing on launching a documentary, uh, and then uh, it, in order to properly monetize everything, you know, like uh, look at some uh, having my own supplement line. Um, since I ha do have a reputation of, uh, of being very uh, a stickler to uh, to to quality. Uh, but also most importantly, I have my business partner, a guy by the name of Owen Nelson, that's, uh, working and getting his pharmacy degree. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, that rode with me, dude, she rode with me throughout this entire bid, man, this entire five years. When I had my cell phone illegally, there was three people that always picked up the phone. A woman that was in my life a year prior to my incarceration, when I was contemplating divorce that I never committed to her was the person that has been with me through that entire five years. She's get, I, you know, I, I helped to get all her aesthetic spa, beauty, um, beauty um, licenses. So I'm in the process of um, um, heading out once my relocation package happens to head out to uh, West Palm Beach and, and, and launch like an aesthetic spa, but very cool. boutique style type of. Yeah, right uh, there. yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this question, Richard. <laughs> how did, number one, how do you get a cell phone in prison? And number two, how do you hide the cell phone in prison? We were, he paid a we lot of fucking this. money, I can tell no, you No, what I want to know is how do you charge the cell phone? Charge it. Wait, let me say something. John, he, <laughs> wait, let me say something before he tells the story. It's okay. very, very expensive to buy a cell phone. In prison. Very expensive. He said he couldn't but, afford potato chips. You know chips. what he fucking did? He made one of his friends... Fuck a fucking grenade for a cell phone. No, but no, no, you're not. <laughs> what? I had my business partner fuck a cripple. <laughs> yeah, Nelson, even worse than a grenade, a, a cripple. Owen grenade. Nelson fucked a crippled girl that barely showered because I needed an eight hundred dollar iPhone fucking six. What? So he prostituted his friend. Dude, I fucked a crippled girl that didn't shower for free. What, what did she work? <laughs> she worked at the I was prison. Twenty one years happened? old. I uh, fucking hope you learned the lesson so here. Then, Greg. Hey, Greg, have you ever fucked? Wait, Greg, 
Have you ever fucked a midget? No, that was Bob Bonham that used to be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how do you charge wait. the phone in prison, Richard? Well, there used to be um, those bodybuilder really, midgets. That's, yeah. that is that's what really I wanted to know. Because you can't well, just leave it on the nightstand, you know, in the charger. Of course. But um, what we Great did was uh, we would use the um, the light bulbs, the fluorescent lightings, and we would do the and we would rewire it to um to, and then um take the USB Cs or whatever um outlet we would have and connect it directly with that rewiring. Right. And then just char- just charge like that. And that and just worked. leave it in the fucking uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where would you yeah. hide? The, where would you hide the phone when it was charging? Um, I do not want to disclose right, right, some right, of those hiding spots because then I'll blow, I'll blow up their spot. Right, right, right. Through. All the guys are going to get in trouble. Hey. You're find all the guys' cell phones now. Richard, did, no, you, you know, Richard, did you learn how to light a cigarette with the with the what, light bulb socket? Did they teach <laughs> what? You with batteries, dude. With batteries. <laughs> they would have like the double A battery. When I, would, when I would smoke weed, when I was like depressed or some shit like that, and I would smoke marijuana, I have a fucking double A battery. Did, so did, so you, they had weed in prison too? Dude, I'm telling you, you I'm telling oh, yeah. you that prison, yeah. prison is practically a fucking frat house. <laughs> Dude, I, you know, what prison were you in anyway? Dude, the COs used to bring this shit in. Hold on. I used to the um, COs. You want a I phone? Think... Get the CO. Back when I was there, was beepers, but, hold, you know. Greg, hold CO. on a second. Where, I want to know where he was. Um, the last place I was was um, Yazoo City Low in, me, in Yazoo City, Mississippi. And that dude was practically a, a, a frat house. Why were you it, all the way in, in Mississippi? Because because the feds hated me because I was really, really good in beating disciplinary hearing shots because wow. I, would, I always had a cell phone. So they always wanted to get me to, um, to, to take 41 good days of good time away from me. Uh, but I was always good because I would dissect the, I would dice, I would prepare for a DHO hearing like it was fucking trial. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, so you and got every, caught. You got caught with the cell phone a few times. No, but never dead to rights. They, it oh. would be around the vicinity of me, oh. but because of the, because of what's called, um, it's called a um, common area. Right. They, they never could have pinned it on me. Oh. Dude, they Even if it was like dead, fuck- Dude, they put him in a fucking hole for how long, Rich? Was it that nine last months? Time? Nine wow. months. What, hold on. When when you went in there, didn't you want to get out as quickly as possible? One hundred percent. Why would is, you but, even risk having a cell phone in there? Because I want I want to be a father. His son, yeah. Why could you call him on the payphone? The you last thing I wanted in my life is for my son to hear. Is for my son to hear this calls from a federal prison. Well, your wife would have heard that and she could have put you on the phone with him. <laughs> Dude, I got caught on a payphone talking shit. I I got in trouble for that. I'm yeah, you they listen to all those Dude, I'm yeah. fucking dumb. I'm yeah. really dumb. I really You know am. what? Um, you I'm know a what, Dave? Fucking guy. You, know, you know what, Dave? Right. At the end of the day, it's a blessing in disguise because now my son is is seven on his way to eight. Right. And he now thinks he, he now sees that I'm about to go home and all he thought and all he thinks about was daddy was at work. Yeah, and I and I would have oh, changed okay. and I would have changed that I, I wouldn't change that for the fucking I, world. I, I understand that now. Let me ask you this question: When you have you seen your son yet in person? Um, no, because I'm currently in home confinement right. uh, at my mother's in Pensacola. But um, they're doing the relocation package now, so probably like in about a couple of weeks, Are I'll be you, back in. Uh, I'll be back in Miami. I mean, that's got to be the probably the greatest feeling in your, in the world right now. Just just being oh, able yeah, to hold man. your son after five years, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, just holding my mom. I mean, just holding my mom that I haven't seen for five years. I mean, you saw the video in yeah. my Instagram. It's like, yeah, it, it was devastating, bro. Yeah. yeah. Have you uh, have you had any conjugal visits yet since you've been out? Uh, <laughs> with his right hand, I, I, well, Greg. For you, I asked. Him um, she's she's coming over. Um, my girl that have um, that I've been waiting for. You know, she's coming over next week. So oh, uh, I will be. I will have. Rich, uh, you, you promise? You swear you're you're live right here with John. Uh, John Bravo, uh, can you go videotape that uh, that conjugal visit for the internet? That should be your <laughs> oh, first yeah. YouTube video you guys put up. I could probably do a really good cinematic <laughs> porno job on that. Too. <laughs> Everyone's always been asking me, John, film porno. It'll be the highest quality shit ever. You know what? Maybe maybe I will one day, but I won't uh-huh. be in it. I'll just film the girls. You know? I'll yeah. discuss it with her to see if she's if she's yeah. down with it. Yeah, you gotta look. You gotta make money, right? You have you don't have any income right now. We gotta build up the, the nest egg again. You know? Rich. Start to OnlyFans. <laughs> let, Rich, let me ask you this question. Oh, girl. Were you nervous when you started buying the cars and stuff like that? Did you say to yourself, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be driving around like in Lamborghinis. You know, it's probably not. It's probably painting no, a bad he, image of me. 
He was renting them out. It was a business. It, it was, was a business deal. Yeah. My 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 mentor in business, my mentor in business told me that no habit is a bad habit if it's making you money. And if you if you really thoroughly analyze my company, the first three years, even when we were making about ten to fifteen thousand dollars in sales a day, I was still driving a ninety nine um, dollar a month Beetle convertible oh, that I used to barely wash. The reasons why I started going to uh, driving extravagant cars and buying all these slew of cars is because I figured out a way to make money with them. So even though I had nine or ten cars, I was making money off of them. How? Even I had, even though I had That's Cartier good. jewelry and a shit ton of Rolex watches, I was making money off of them. How were you doing that? Because um, I had a company. It was called Limitless Exotics, right. where um, LimitlessExotics.com, where um, if celebrities, executives uh, were coming to like Miami right. and we're going to do a, a video shoot or a rap video, blah blah blah, I needed jewelry. I, I, you know, it's like I would, you know, I would rent it out to them. Oh, wow. Um, well, I've seen you cars, give that, I would rent. Yeah, Rich, I would see like uh, Flex and other bodybuilders driving around those Lamborghinis. That's why. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just like, it's just like that. It's just like that piece of shit fucking Mike Rashid and all these fools, like driving around in these fucking videos on Mike Mondays, like, hey, check out my SLS. Fuck you. That's my oh, car. Oh, that was your car. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, like, you know, like driving the Maybach and be like, hey, man, it's like Maybach style, you know, big pippin. Motherfucker, you're broke. If like, it makes you feel any better, Richard, I drive a 1999 Honda Civic with 275,000. Well, miles. I'm gonna tell you something. Yo, I'm gonna tell you something. That was the most humbling the experience. The most yeah. humbling experience for He's me right. was yesterday. My most humbling experience was yesterday. I went to um, Chevy here in Pensacola, and I brought a fucking Equinox. <laughs> I, I, this is a guy that had a McLaren P1, a 1.8 oh, million no. dollar car, Shit. and is buying a gay ass Equinox. <laughs> And you were happy to do, and you were excited about it, probably too, right? Fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, because now I can drive and go see my son. Right, right. Hey, George has seen my car, and George will tell you the one window's taped closed. Yeah, right, with duct tape. He yes, said, he yes. said duct tape. Yeah, I got the window closed. You know. Right, you gotta take a picture of the. I can only imagine what the inside of that car looks like. You oh, probably dude, got you can make food. a video. You'd be like, forget about There's it. It's probably food wrappers. Yeah, food. He's got that. Uh, he's got that Lee it Haney poster smells. on the windshield. Probably. It's yeah. more like an Irish car than an Italian car because I picture an Italian car completely neat, clean. Yeah, yeah. You know, wait, wait, Richard, wait, where did you I, keep all those cars when you had them? Did you have a big garage or something like that? I'm sorry. Oh no, what I used to do was um. The, the turnaround time for for um, for renting them yeah. um, was 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 a constant flow. So I never had more than about four cars in my lot. So I had like a four a, you know four car um, parking lot in the condo. I would pay the extra one hundred fifty dollars a month for a di for an additional car. Oh, so you just you were living in a condo. You weren't literally living in a, in a big house or anything like that. Um, correct. It's like because um, I never I was never fond of um, I was never fond of um, houses. Did the, like, condo like the condo community there? Did they think like what, did, you were some big drug dealer or what? I mean, what did they think about this whole thing with all those cars going in and out of there? Nah, they were ignorant and just thought that it's like damn, it's like Jim's make that much fucking money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's in Miami. Come on, he, he can do that funny. again. Richard is a dime a rent dozen. Rent out the cars. He doesn't have the cars anymore. The government no, took him, George. But he can get new. Why? He can, he, Where's he getting the new cars? Where's he going to get a couple million dollars to buy cars? Rich, you could actually rent, rent out that rent Equinox rent on fucking uh, on the world. World. You got to be able to buy the cars the first. Time. What buyer? <laughs> How are you going to rent out cars if you don't own the car? He's no, he could rent out the Equinox. <laughs> yeah, I could rent out. If I anybody, knew, hey, I'm not even joking. People actually yeah. pay for that shit. Are hey, if anybody's cars, interested, yeah. I'll People be willing to rent that bike in the 99 Civic. He, he was <laughs> renting McLarens. He wasn't renting Equinoxes, George. No, but yeah. people are renting regular cars. Right, now. but no one pay. You're gonna pay what? Get a fifty dollars a day for your Equinox? <laughs> no, get more than that. George, now. bad idea. <laughs> he doesn't want to use car lot, uh, George. I'm just saying he could do, look. He's smart. Start Obviously a Hertz smart. rental car. Yeah. Obviously, he's, you're you're brilliant with in business. Right. All right. You could take. Why don't you same, have him invest in the cookie take, company? Same stuff you? and and right. and do do it the right way. Why don't way? you have him run your cookie company? What do you mean run it? Well, he can be a, a, be one of your partners. Whatever he wants to do. I mean, it, he's got it, he's got the know how. You just know how to make cookies. So let him market everything for you. I got the brains. You got. The that brains. could be a good idea. This actually. might be a marriage right, right here, right, made in heaven. You know. Let's just right. say, um, let's just say this, Dave. Yeah. The reasons why I was able to sustain throughout my entire um, incarceration time is because the beauty and benefits of having a cell phone illegally is that I was able to effectively market. Um, um, the companies, the legal companies of a lot of uh, people in prison. Oh, really? Wow. I, I have some really, I have some, I have some <laughs> four close friends that are still incarcerated. They're in the process of coming out. Right. Um, you know, really, really soon. 
that have thriving businesses, clinics, um, breeding companies, you name it. Right. And I was their social media, internet marketing Oh my God, consultant. really? Wow. Yeah. That's cool. I, used, I handled their social media marketing, their, <laughs> their SEO on a fucking galaxy. Oh, so you're not a dual. That's it's, amazing. It's, it's massive marketing. You can have a great product. And if nobody fucking I'm knows about it. I'm telling you, George, it, you should go meet. Oh, you yeah. live right there. Go meet with him. That's what Diesel did. Go meet with the. Uh, you guys are all in Florida one. anyway. That's where I approach right. one. I think you got. I think you got. George, you guys go got a partnership here. here. <laughs> you need. Don't uh, put any tremble under the cookies, though. Please. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> They'll Don't sell better, but you'll wind up in jail. I got, I got the I first thing right here. Oh, uh, there we go. What's that? Let me see that. Let me see that. Are those tremble on cookies, Georgie? These are tremble on cookies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Rice Krispie. Is these protein? George, you, yes. need to, you need to put some of those in a bag. Oh, and let me taste something. What, what's what's Richard, in there? I got the taste Oh, he's cutter. got the cook, the cutter, too. Wow. Listen, those I, are great. That's those a cookie things. cutter. Tyler's those getting excited those, over there. My girl ate the whole fucking tray. He sent me a whole bunch of it. I wanted in these? to eat it. Really? Yeah. I had one fucking piece. The rest of it was gone because she loved them so much. George, you need to bring that up to Richard. How many grams of carbs in this? That's probably about 10. And how much protein do you think? I would say like eight. Here we go, John. We're watching it. Again. Uh, I feel run. like Oliver Twist. Don't run. Remember when Oliver Twist was watching? Is this what you said? Bravo? Yeah. No, yeah. like the movie 48 Hours when Eddie Murphy's looking in the window of his old house and they're all eating wow. dinner. At Dave, the funny dinner. part is she didn't even know it was a protein one. She just ate the whole fucking thing. I'm like, you ate all the My protein. My son Logan will devour this. I know he will. Was she, I, yeah, I was made, she I made, look, we need – when when we first came out with our cookie – and I approached Diesel. We know, you know, with the whole idea, I approached a bodybuilder guy who had like a half million followers. And I knew we developed the product. What we needed was massive marketing. Right. Massive marketing. Not you know? even. Not even. Let me take you, let me take you through uh, a five-minute um, hack sheet, uh, a five-second hack sheet. Um, one of the, when I knew that I had a very good, um, understanding of marketing and its capacities was when I, when I did a project with GSK, um, my second year at McKenzie. Um, my second year at McKenzie, um, GSK wanted to launch a product for the HIV market. I did my due diligence and research and realized that African Americans were, were African Americans were the highest contractors of HIV. So I went ahead and um, negotiated to have uh, Magic Johnson as the spokesperson for Comivir. Dude, that became a billion dollar drug, the biggest wow. selling HIV drug. And that's when I knew how much and how powerful influencer marketing was. Right. Yeah. I'm telling you, you don't you could have a shit product, right. but if you have the right fucking person promoting it, you're a fucking millionaire in a month. But they have to how much did they pay Magic actively, Johnson for that? I'm sorry? How much did Magic Johnson get paid for that? Uh he's still getting royalties in perpetuity till this day. What what it was the initial like uh you know Amount of money that they need um, to get him in there to suck him in. It was, it was about fifty six million dollars. Holy uh, shit! At the total package, wow. the total package. That tells you how much uh, money they probably made if, if they, yeah, they well, paid that's, him fifty six million. Oh, it was a billion, you make, billion you make dollars. A billion. Oh, that's HIV, the whole idea. Yeah, it's, it was it's a billion dollar that's drug. The, you know, but without a magic, drug. there'd be nothing. You know, it, it, it was a billion dollar drug. Yeah. I mean, right. now, now, even with his patent having been um, long expired. Um, it's still a huge drug just because of the fact that the dude is undetectable. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's amazing. Well, that's amazing. Richard, I, I, you know, I'm so happy to hear that you're out of prison, and um, I'm glad that you know you can get your life started again. And you know what? It's it, it. I always tell people it sucks to have to deal with something like that, but once it's in the rearview mirror, it, you become a better person when you get out because you have a different perspective on life, oh, and yeah. hopefully. We're going to see you doing some amazing, great things now in a legal perspective and uh, and achieving the 100%. greatness that you really were meant to achieve. You just kind of got sidetracked a little bit. Uh, and that and that's the way I look at it. And and, and thanks for that, um, Dave. It's like um, no hard feelings. You know, no hard feelings between you and I. <laughs> no, no, I've, I, you know, I, just, I've always I've always admired you. I, I, and why did I not contact you in hopes of trying to convince you to promote my company? It's probably just because I never got to that point. I would have <laughs> No, I'm glad you didn't. I would have talked you out of it anyway. I would have said you're out of your mind. I would have I would have told you, you know what? Once I got out of prison, I had a different perspective. I said, you know what? I would have said this guy's a smart dude. I'd be like, what are you doing? 
And I probably wouldn't have talked you out of it because the money was too good coming in. And, you you know, until you get caught, you don't realize that you're going to get caught, so to speak. But, you know, you obviously, if you would have just stopped and, and, like you said, went the legal route, you would have been, you'd be sitting on, you know, $100 million in the bank now probably. Easy, because uh, when the feds got me, just to kind of give you guys some insight, hence the reasons why Miami Times considered it the, um, the largest operation in U.S. history is that they valued my company at $23.7 million. Oh, my God. Oh nice. My God. Shit. Nice. Because uh, I because I started WFN at, in November 2013, and I got caught February 2017. Having said that, because you were good at marketing it, it's not that hard to sell steroids, <laughs> especially because they're illegal. But yes, you but took, yes, you but, took it to a different level because of the influences you actually convinced to help you market it. But he was more than just steroids. He built a whole like an empire. He had different things going on. Right. But Greg, the money was coming in from the steroids because people can't get and they were good quality steroids. Well, and that's why that, people bought them, you know. Hey, Dave, wait a minute. By yeah. the way, before you end the show. Yes. Jennifer Hollingsworth is a girl who's a huge fan of our show. She watches every week. Okay. And I can't believe girl. I can't believe girls. Watch this I can't show. either, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what else, Momo? So <laughs> we she have a couple of them. Shout out. <laughs> so Jennifer Hollingsworth, thanks for watching. Oh, us. we got an awesome thanks, thanks, shout Jennifer. out Ricky False. He's got his uh, the fight oh, coming yeah. up at the end of the month. You have that uh, that poster I sent you? <clears throat> Mr. G and uh, Jimmy the Bull will be there. And also Fighting John, the vet it's, that I'm it's helping. It's the summer please. salute. <clears throat> it's called uh, WCW Caged Warrior Championships uh, 26. And I guess uh, I, who's the... Uh, I guess he has Ric Flair going there, right? Is Ric Flair announced? Well, Ric Flair's Rick not Flair's making it. Oh, Ric Flair's Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan's uh, stand-in may oh, they, be oh, there. They got the fake Hulk Hogan over here. He'll be there. Hulk <laughs> 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 Hogan. No, Ric Flair was here. He's got the biggest gonna, quote gonna, on the lake. Hey, guys, did you notice Jimmy the Bull came and, and he showed his face and then he left? Who? He realized he was outnumbered. Yeah, he, he, he he's like my father. Worried. You got to understand, if he can't be the one talking, he doesn't want to be on the show. You know, my right. father was the same way. If my father couldn't tell his stories, he wanted to go home, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed this because I like Richard. Oh, it was I great. Think, I, 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 Richard, was man, good. I, I like you a lot, man. I got to see something. The, the right. reason why, Richard, something Richard right. this was so good is because you're fully transparent about what happened and what you did and, and, and what you didn't do. And I think that people are going to really appreciate the fact that you kind of like, yeah, I fucked up. Here it is, you know. Rich, and Dave, let me tell you, I man. I've been hey, wait, wait, let me say something first. Right. I've been involved with this shit from the beginning, right? But let me tell you, and I'm not kissing your ass, but I learned a lot from you on how to ask certain questions that I didn't think about. So I'm learning <laughs> from you. So thank, thank you. You probably didn't no, know you helped me. You know what it is? If I don't ask the questions that are on people's minds, then they're going to say, Dave, you know, Dave was just having a love affair with Richard, you know, and then yeah. they didn't really get into the meaty, juicy topics. I had to ask him the tough questions because – that's what the fans and people watching this expect, but you know. No, I, but you do it. You do it in the way it should be done. You know, you don't come off as being an asshole when you ask. Those no, because I, because right. I can relate to what he went through. You know what I mean? I, I I was sitting in his seat at one point, not to the extent that he was in it, obviously, but it sucks when you know you're going to jail and there's no way you're getting out of it unless you're going to rat and you have no intention of ratting because that's just not in your character. So you got to kind of suck it up and just you know, you know. I always tell people you just kind of like resign yourself to whatever your fate is at that point. And that's, it's a tough thing I to hate, do when you're a control. When player. I see these guys like him get arrested and I know he's got a kid and a wife, the first thing I think of is, oh shit, here goes his life like this, right? I mean, I didn't see my son from 10 years old to 19 years old. So last time I saw my son, he had a high voice like this, you know? And right. the next thing I know, I see a man now, you know, right. like, dude, what's so my first, it's, it's funny you said that because my first fight um, in prison, was uh, my son was three years old and he could barely um, utter a word and he was singing happy birthday to me. Dude, wow. and and a guy was like um, yelling out. I was like, ain't nobody uses this fucking phone unless I say so. Dude, I was teary-eyed. I looked at the guy and I was like, excuse me, what was it, what was it that you said? And he's like, ain't nobody. Dude, I did a fucking Van Damme roundhouse kick to that dude's fucking head, man. Knocked him the fuck out. Went to the shoe for two fucking I was going to say, there's no violence. You're lucky they didn't ship you out of there. They did. Oh, they, they did ship them out. <laughs> the no, they why. shipped that's them the out. They why. they sent them with the fucking rats and cockroaches in Brooklyn back in. Oh, that's the reason. Man. That's the reasons why. In the five years that I've been down, I've been to four different places. Oh, so Rich, tell them how bad that fucking Brooklyn prison was with the rats. Very, and cockroaches. very bad, man. They're very bad people. I literally experienced about four or five people literally getting stabbed right in front of me. Um, rats, the food, straight trash. I mean, and. 
it, it was, dude, we were there during the polar vortex when the lights were off. It's a huge lawsuit right now happening with MDC Brooklyn. I mean, breaking, like, no food. We weren't fed for, like, almost damn near three days. The only what? reason why I didn't fucking wow. die is because I had commissary. Wow. It was bad. It, people died during that polar vortex when the di- when the, when the power went away. Wow. BOP, BOP uh, and the Department of Justice don't give a fuck about inmates, man. I'm sorry to tell you that. You know, it's like it's it's very easy to get in there, man, but to get out. John, I'm we talk you. about John Romano. We talk about this. This is no zero tolerance for violence when you're in a low or a, a, a camp. Oh yeah, and they yep. will ship your ass out of there to the worst place, give you diesel therapy, and man, make your life miserable. It seems like that's what happened to you, Richard. Sorry, that's to hear the that, unfortunate man. thing that happened to me, yeah. man. I the the second fight I had was with a child molester because he casually came into my room and he's like, "Hey, what's your case?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, steroids." And he's like, "Oh, I raped and molested a nine year old girl." I'm like, what "The fuck." He told you that? He, wow. He told me that as casual as you and I are chatting. And I'm like, come again? And he's like, oh, I raped and molested a nine-year-old girl. And I'm like, you're the dumb fuck to actually repeat it a second right. time? What the fuck is wrong with you? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that I fucked up. I'm like, look, man, please get out of this room. And he's like, there's no, I can't. I'm like, I'm telling you a second time, man. <laughs> please get and out of this room. you know what the room. saddest fucking part about that is? Those molesters end up out of prison in fucking three, four years. While yeah, but they want the- their ass kicked. They're weird. Who the fuck goes in and breaks that? <laughs> You're right. Who right. the fuck... You tell somebody, yeah, dude, I robbed a fucking store or something like yeah, that. Or, exactly. you know, I mugged well, Everyone finds out about who everyone you know, is. They though, go, right? I molested a nine-year-old girl. You know, I thought she was seven, but fuck, she was nine. You know, yeah, yeah. you don't do that shit. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to be I looking would... to get your ass kicked for that. Yeah, he probably right, right. right. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, guys, uh, check out Mr. G's Protein Snacks.com for your keto Send cookies. Send me some of those, man. For your Rice Krispie treat, you got to send, send Richard a little send, care package. Send, send, Richard, send us your address. We'll send you a care package. We're if John and I can't get him, at least yes. Richard. <laughs> hey, 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 he's been in prison for five hey, years. Hey, he needs him. Exactly, hey, yeah. Greg. I got your shipping box. Oh, he's right shipping here. right there. All right. We're gonna write on <laughs> <him>. <laughs> My son Logan's gonna <laughs> color on the boxes with Mr. G. I'll, yeah, mark, I'll market the fuck. I'll market the fuck out of them if uh, if they're the, uh, if they're if they're good, man. Don't worry about wait, it. Wait, you. Hey, wait. Send him some uh, cookies. If he likes them, then you guys George, will talk. Just like the way he George. set up his contracts with the with the athletes. Wait, there. George should <laughs> fuck with him. George should write like Trent Bolognese, fucking all that shit on the phone. No, no, don't it's do good. that. No, 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 he wrote like the most creative thing on the packaging and oh, on the yeah, box. Oh yeah, he always does. He would write like "I love Elvis" and all this crazy <laughs> shit because he knows I'm, how much Elvis. You guys see him right me. now? I swear to God, right? This box is patriotic. The Second Amendment is our God-given right. <laughs> Two most important things in life, a God I'm family and making it anywhere. Thank you, Richard Rodriguez, <laughs> and uh, good Thank luck you, in the man, future, man. Week, watch and, and, uh, Dave will get some new treats. Thank you guys a lot, Dave. I fucking love you, Greg. I fucking love you too, man. Dude, I love you, and, man. Uh, I love and respect you, bro. You got my love Romano, and respect. man, it's like, um, I'm sorry to get emotional, man, but Romano, man, you know that the times in which we've hung out, bro, it was it was great, man. It's like I felt like you know how you know how close I used to get to the athletes, man. And that's the reasons why it bothered me a lot when I saw them offend me. Um, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the atypical drug dealer, man. I I really looked at you. I looked, I looked at a lot of people like brothers, man. Um, you you guys can tell me it's like anything, and I was and you knew that I was there for you, like you and calling me any fucking time, and you were you like you stood true, bro. You stood true, um, um, Mr. Romano, man. And like and people like you and LeBron and all that stuff, a dime a fucking dozen, bro. And I would always be indebted to you, man. Fucking and fucking love you, man. <laughs> Wow, you know, very nice. Very you're, nice. you're one of them, man. You're one of them, man. And and, and back, thanks bro. for that, bro. Thanks for that, man. Love you back, bro. All right. And on that very touching, sympathetic note, usually we end on a fart or or or, or something else, but this <laughs> this one is going to be on a nice touching note. I'm Dave Palumbo with the entire whack pack. We'll see you next week. That's what after hours right, is about. Take care, man. Friendship and loyalty. Thanks, Richard. Down. Very Richard, good interview. God bless you. God bless Guys, you. That was fun.